science fans, and welcome to Sciencia. Our topic for today is how fermentation creates good food. Mmm, kimchi! Interestingly enough, kimchi has gone beyond adding flavor to our mealtimes but has also become popular because of its protective effects as a probiotic food item. In fact, a recent study has been published showing that for each increase in the average national consumption of fermented vegetables, the mortality risk for COVID-19 decreased by 35.4%. And that's significant, even in the realm of science. But how does kimchi do it? Hmm, it might have something to do with the mitochondria. Among organelles, the mitochondria is very popular. This double membrane organelle that generates cellular energy is one of the few things students across various age groups seem to remember and appreciate about cell biology. But what does the mitochondria actually do to deserve such fame? Dubbed as the powerhouse of the cell, it converts carbohydrates into cellular energy molecules called ATP. The process begins with glucose, our favorite carbohydrate, entering the cell. This begins an ancient process called glycolysis where glucose, a 6-carbon sugar, becomes converted into a 3-carbon molecule called pyruvate. Glycolysis typically has 10 steps, but it can be divided into two phases. The first phase is called the energy-requiring phase. Here, the starting molecule of glucose gets rearranged and two phosphate groups are attached to it. The phosphate groups make the modified sugar, now called fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, unstable, allowing it to split in half and form two phosphate-bearing 3-carbon sugars. Because the phosphates used in these steps come from ATP, two ATP molecules get used up. Two kinds of 3-carbon molecules are created after the unstable 6-carbon molecule splits up. Only one type, called glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate, can enter the following chemical reactions. The unfavorable one, called DAP, is easily converted to this favorable conformation. So eventually, both of them get used up. In the second phase, called the energy-releasing phase, each 3-carbon sugar is converted into another 3-carbon molecule called pyruvate. In these reactions, two ATP molecules and one NADH molecule are made. But because this phase takes place twice, once for each of the three carbon sugars, it makes four ATP and two NADH in total. So it is only at this point that the mitochondria comes in. Pyruvate enters the mitochondria and in the presence of oxygen, gets converted into several molecules of carbon dioxide in order to create more cellular energy. Pyruvate oxidation is the first set of reactions in the mitochondria, and it takes place in the mitochondrial matrix, where a removal of a carboxyl group followed by an oxidation reaction that creates carbon dioxide as a byproduct, and an addition of an acetyl group transforms pyruvate to acetyl coenzyme A. At this point, we'll have two units of acetyl coenzyme A that can eventually move on to the citric acid cycle, but we've also released two units of carbon released as carbon dioxide, and finally, we have created two units of the energy molecule NADH. The citric acid cycle, or the Krebs cycle, <laughs> is a series of reactions that we won't discuss in detail. But in essence, the process uses acetyl coenzyme A from the pyruvate oxidation and through a series of oxidation steps, cycles back to the compound citrate. Each step gets rid of a carbon molecule that is eventually released as carbon dioxide. But more importantly, for energy production, it also produces the following molecules, NADH, FADH2, and ATP, or GTP. The NADH produced in the Krebs cycle is what is used to create more ATP molecules in 
an electron transport chain. The oxidation of NADH sets a string of chemical reactions in motion that transfers electrons from one receiver to the next that activates the creation of a multitude of ATP units. So, in the end, with one glucose molecule and the presence of oxygen and the mitochondria, it can create 30 to 32 units of ATP. And that's why it's called the powerhouse of the cell. But what if there's no mitochondria or no oxygen to use? Well, the answer is, well, not kimchi per se, but the process of fermentation. Fermentation is the pathway that pyruvate takes when there's no mitochondria to visit or no oxygen to use for oxidation. There are two general types of fermentation. Alcohol fermentation generates carbon dioxide and ethanol in the process of recovering NADH from acetaldehyde, while lactic acid fermentation generates lactate directly from pyruvate as NADH is recovered. Bacteria and some forms of fungi proceed to lactic acid fermentation, while yeast specifically typically proceeds to alcohol fermentation. But back to kimchi. How do we trigger the process of lactic acid fermentation in order to create this amazing food product? You begin by soaking your vegetable of choice in a brine solution to flavor it, but also to achieve an additional benefit. Salt is a very potent preservative. It kills some forms of bacteria by forcing the water out of its cells and causing them to shrink and eventually die. The vegetable must stay in the brine solution for more than 45 minutes. The longer the soaking, the more flavor gets in and the more certain you are that the unwanted bacteria are dead. In the meantime, we can prepare the special sauce. There are many ways to make the kimchi sauce, but it typically contains chili, fish sauce or shrimp paste, garlic, and sometimes ginger. Some add sugar as well to balance out the spice. But the sugar we add here is also to help jumpstart the process of fermentation. Mix the vegetable and the sauce thoroughly and store in an airtight container at cool room temperatures from 1 to 5 days. Inspect occasionally and taste if the ripeness is to your liking. During this incubation period, a specific species of bacteria that survived the earlier high salt environment is starting to do its magic. Lactobacillus bacteria, our survivors, convert sugars into lactic acid, which preserves the vegetables and gives them the kimchi's characteristic tangy flavor. Lactobacillus bacteria form the backbone of probiotic food. The more food with lactobacillus that we ingest, the better for us because they help us digest our food and they also help prevent the growth of bad bacteria that we may have ingested accidentally. After several days of incubation, the kimchi should be ready. Refrigerate them afterwards to keep it fresh and tasty. Why is kimchi awesome? Let me count the ways. Predominantly made of cruciferous vegetables, kimchi is a good source of dietary fiber and is low in calories. One serving of kimchi provides over 50% of the daily recommended amount of vitamin C and carotene. It is also rich in vitamin A, thiamine, riboflavin, calcium, and iron. And now, it seems like it can also dampen the deadly symptoms of COVID-19. Though we have yet to fully understand how kimchi does what it does against COVID-19, it could be a specific compound that is present in the food, or maybe its overall ability to fortify our immune system. But one thing is clear, eating kimchi regularly is good for you. I hope you were able to learn something from the short video on cellular respiration, fermentation, and the process of making kimchi. I hope you can give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to our channel. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or requests for content, please don't hesitate to message me, your resident Filipina scientist, in the comment section below. At this point, I would like to give a shout out 
ELSU's Biology Department for helping inspire this video and also the LaSalle Food and Water Institute for making such a wonderful request. Thank you very much and see you around!